Hello, and welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah. Electric vehicles have clearly shown to be effective in fleets, whether it's police vehicles, any emergency vehicles, firefighters, EMTs, school buses, city buses, taxis, Ubers, rental cars, semi-trucks, delivery vans, and more. And I mean, there are a million different types of fleets out there. Delivery logistics, having to move things from one place to another is a big part of how this country, how the world functions and moves. And most of these, most of these fleets that are used today are used with internal combustion engine vehicles. Now, if you are an electric vehicle owner, I don't even need to get into the whole schematics of what owning an internal combustion engine vehicle is like from having to fill up to have to do oil changes, transmission fuel, fluid changes, all of the hundreds of moving parts in an internal combustion engine vehicle mean that it can be pretty complex and not cost effective, especially when you have hundreds of these vehicles. A percentage of your fleet is always going to have problems versus an electric vehicle, which has less moving parts, which decreases complexity and increases reliability. Therefore, less of your fleet is going to be out or have some sort of problem. I'll first start off and bring up Amazon. Now we're going to talk about more than Amazon. We're talking about FedEx, police vehicles, school buses, and even talk about the huge USPS fiasco and what's happening now. I'll give you an update on that. But first I'll start off with Amazon. Amazon has proven that electric vehicles work well in fleets. If you live in Orlando, Miami, Atlanta, New York, Boston, um, Toronto, Detroit, Chicago, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, the Bay Area, um, Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix. I mean, I can just go anywhere, any large metropolitan area, you're likely going to have and see these electric Amazon vans by Rivian, the Rivian EDV, electric delivery van. Amazon has over 20,000 of these on the road in the United States. They have a few hundred in Germany that they use as well. So if you live in Germany, you might have seen these as well. And they have over 24,000 chargers at 150 distribution centers across the United States and have delivered more than 1 billion packages, I think in 2024 alone. So clearly Amazon, the largest e-commerce company in the on the world, over a trillion dollar valuation, has proved that, well, electric vehicles can work well and fleets. And it, all it takes is one company to do it for other companies to follow suit. Now, of course, the upfront cost, right? These vans are likely going to be more expensive. This is an emerging technology, right? I've talked about emerging technologies in my video about a uh, rental car, electric vehicles, you can watch that up there. But the introduction cost of having to install these vans, right? Again, this is a new emerging technology, constantly changing. It is expensive. These Amazon Rivian vans start at like $70,000. But in the long run, you do save time, you save money when it comes to fueling up your electric vehicle. Fueling, would fueling really be the right word there? Regardless, Amazon is saving money versus what a single gas van would be. But it's not only Amazon, right? Uh, DHL is the exact same thing. They have a few of these bright drop Zevo vans from General Motors. Same thing with FedEx. They have over 150 of these vans. I believe these are primarily in Southern California. I remember uh, in August of 2022, I was in Los Angeles, saw one of these vans, Mine absolutely exploded. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's one of those bright drop vans. And actually just yesterday, I went to my local GM dealership and there were two of these for sale that anyone can just buy. Any company can just buy them and use them. And so clearly on the delivery side of things, right, the, the fleet use of electric vehicles when it comes to delivering last mile, my last mile delivery, what it would be called, is pretty simple, right? It's not ever changing. It's not like a semi truck, which might have to go here to this city to that city. For a lot of these last mile deliveries, it's really direct. Everything is within five miles of each other. And you're moving like that returning to the same place overnight. And so clearly, it works well here. Well, same thing for these vehicles over here. Um, Tesla's fleet, right? Tesla has their own electric semi. And the Tesla semi, Tesla is now building out the infrastructure because come 2025, their production facility will be built and they will start producing more of these. And clearly Pepsi and Lays, the Pepsi Lays Co. company, 
have proven that the Tesla vans do work well. Another company, Saya, has bought two of these vans. Saya is a freight the delivery company. Think of it as a FedEx or UPS, but for larger, you know, larger things, right? Maybe it's not as efficient to deliver a crate of a thousand, I don't know, glass plates to through UPS or FedEx. It might be cheaper through Saya. Weird example, but the point is that's what Saya is. They are a semi delivery company. They deliver things with their semis and they ordered two Tesla semi trucks. All it takes is to add one of your vehicles and your fleet to be electric to see how well electric vehicles work, especially for a lot of these repetitive processes. Red Bull, on the other hand, bought a few of these Isuzu NRR EVs. When was the last time you heard about Isuzu? Isn't this interesting? Thought this company was gone. But they have a bunch of these electric trucks, which have been fitted with Red Bull's delivery boxes, which last mile delivery, right? Red Bull delivers their drinks from their manufacturing facilities to the distribution centers, then to gas stations and stores. And they do that all by truck. Now here, these electric delivery vans, ironically, would deliver Red Bull to these gas stations, right? And it's all done through these electric Isuzu vans. And right, just starting your fleet to be electric, right? Again, the future is going to be electric. Starting now likely makes the most sense. Get ahead of the curve and really not wait until the last minute where it's really hard to implement a lot of these things. But honestly, it would probably get easier the more time goes on. But the point is Red Bull even recognizes that they can use electric vehicle fleets to help deliver their drinks. And it is cost effective for them to do so. Furthermore, we have police officers. And this is more than just police. We have uh, electric fire trucks and electric EMT vehicles. But I'll just use police fleets, for example. Police officers often aren't driving more than 150 miles every single day. And a lot of times they're sitting idle, right? Sitting idle, waiting for things to happen. If anything, they are patrolling an area. Electric vehicles like a Tesla Model Y, for instance, which is the the city of Pasadena, California, has chosen to do with a fleet of all electric police vehicles, they're able to see that, well, hey, the amount of cost that goes in for a bunch of, you know, uh, Ford Explorers idling, the process of getting gas, the maintenance, the oil changes, running a gas fleet can be expensive. It can be annoying. Whether you have a Tesla Model Y, which will run you 10,000 miles before you might even have to see something to do with a tire change, right? And so the maintenance on these vehicles is a lot less, right? The cost for, especially for something like a Tesla Model Y is comparable, often even cheaper than what Ford would charge for their fully kitted out Ford Explorers. And so easily here, I think police fleets are like one of the most obvious examples of where we should probably see more electric vehicles be fitted with you know, be fitted as electric fleets. They should all be electric. Now, there are some cases where maybe gas vehicles make more sense in fleets. And this is not just with police vehicles. I think we will never see the existence of the internal combustion engine go away. People still move things with horse today. The USPS, United States Postal Service, still uses horses to deliver mail. And I don't think that's going to change in the future. I think most of the future, we're going to see electric vehicles. But the point is, I do think that the internal combustion engine is going to stay in for many cases that it will it'll work better than electric vehicles. But all in all, I am saying that I think electric vehicles will take over majority of fleets. Now let's kind of talk about something that has interested me, which is the United States Postal Service. The United States Postal Service currently uses their Grumman or Grumman LLV van. These vans, these delivery vehicles from like the 90s, built in the 90s, are still operating today. I don't know about the reliability of these vans, but the fact that USPS has been using them for so long is pretty impressive. But the fleet is aging. It's getting old. At some point, you're going to have to replace it, right? Modern safety standards are a thing, and you want to make sure that you're delivering mail as efficiently as possible. And so this is where USPS has come in, and they are going to be overhauling their fleet. One of the main companies they're having do this is Oshkosh. Oshkosh is helping build this new van here, which is... Really interesting looking, uh, to say the least. For those who are listening and not watching, it's just this the regular USPS van, the new one, right, with this 
weird, really long roof and really short face. I don't even know what to call it, but it's it, it's hideous. Anyway, USPS is not only overhauling some of their fleet with these vans from Oshkosh, they're also getting some vans from companies like Canoe, Morgan Olson, Rivian, and Ford. In fact, USP, the United States Postal Service already uses Ford e-transit electric vans in their fleet to deliver larger packages, right? So for a lot of your paper mail, you're going to see it delivered through those Gurnman regular box delivery vehicles, right? Same thing, those Oshkosh delivery vehicles, you're going to see a lot of those delivering just regular lighter paper mail. For a lot of larger boxes that are delivered through the United States Postal Service, those are delivered with the Ram Promaster 2500 or the Ford E-Transit. I know they have some Freightliners and Mercedes, but in their electric fleets right now, they have the Ford E-Transit. But the United States Postal Service is trying out three vans three to contract to introduce into their fleet. Now, when it comes to fleets, it actually isn't wise to have your entire fleet be one vehicle. For instance, Amazon doesn't just have Rivian on their electric vehicle fleets. They actually use Ford E-Transits as well. And for their internal combustion engine Amazon fleets, they use Freightliner, Mercedes, which is pretty much the same thing. Ford, they use Ram. They use a lot of different companies to deliver their fleets because let's say there's a recall for some of their vans, or let's say there's some sort of widespread issue that is affecting one model. If it takes out your entire fleet, you're kind of screwed. And so the USPS is obviously diversifying the amount of vehicles and the type of electric vehicles that they have in their fleet. And so the companies they've been eyeing have been Rivian, Canoe, and Morgan Olson. Now I'll talk about Morgan Olson and Rivian right now. Morgan Olson and Rivian, the Morgan Olson van, so I'll say this, Morgan Olson is a box truck maker. Those giant box trucks, uh, uh, gas box trucks, you see FedEx and UPS drive, those are made by Morgan Olson, those giant bread trucks. Morgan Olson makes them. Now, Morgan Olson really isn't right versed in electrification. So what are they doing? They've actually hired Rivian to borrow the powertrain from the EDV. So the same Amazon van you see here, they've essentially said, we want the battery, the drivetrain, the frame, the motors, the steering wheel, the driver's console, the seats, <laughs> the lights, everything, all of the high voltage wiring. We want that and we're going to put it in our van. And that's essentially what these vans are. And so all of these vans here you see in front of you are electric. The Morgan Olsen vans on the right, of course, the canoe vans are on the left, but the Morgan Olsen vans on the right are the electric Morgan Olsen vans. And then the ones on the left are canoe. Now for canoe, canoe is unfortunately likely going to go out of business. It's pretty unfortunate to hear and know this, but they still need tens of millions of dollars to continue to move forward for manufacturing. Currently, a lot of their employees, manufacturing employees are on unpaid leave. That doesn't make employees happy. A lot of them are going to quit, find other work and not return to Canoe. And so even if Canoe can get back, they're not going to have the workforce. It's super complicated. And I unfortunately am confidently saying that I think this is the end of Canoe and Canoe likely won't get this contract with the United States Postal Service. But Morgan Olson and Rivian here, Rivian and Morgan Olson, uh, sorry, the United States Postal Service has already tried these Rivian vans. And so um, this is actually a pretty cool quirk here. If you want to see this, the United States Postal Service releases like a monthly newsletter, but all the interesting things that are happening within the company, they talk about the pros and cons of the canoe van. I'll link some of them in the description. They, they talk about the Rivian van, which is in front of us here, right? They talk about the Rivian delivery van 500, about all of the different things that work with the van. We know the van works well for Amazon, so why wouldn't it work well for the United States Postal Service? And so, right, they're testing these vans to see if they would work well with their USPS fleet. And so that's where we are with the United States Postal Service. United States Postal Service is currently trying to electrify their fleet. And in 2025, we're going to see a lot of movement and motion when it comes to electric vehicles. Again, GM is ramping up the, the production of the Bright Drop Zevo. Rivian is now going to start delivering in 2025 to non-Amazon companies. Now, Amazon and Rivian had a clause which meant Rivian could only sell the van to Amazon. Rivian, Rivian and Amazon came to an agreement. They closed out that clause. Now, starting 2025, quarter one, 
Rivian is now going to be shipping and delivering these vans to other companies. So Rivian hasn't said what companies they are going to be, but I'm suspecting a few companies, they've already had agreements with AT&T and um, Australian mining companies. We've seen DHL Rivian vans. We saw the USPS delivery van, Tire Rack. A few companies Rivian has already seemed to kind of work with. And so clearly, I think come 2025, we're gonna see a lot of movement. Tesla, which I think is the big one here. In the United States, at least, Tesla is really the pioneer when it comes to electric semis. We really don't have a lot of competition here, right? We have Nikola, um, and that's a good example, right? Nikola has their fleets, and Nikola vans are working in fleets right now. But the Tesla semi, right? Tesla has the infrastructure. They have, they're currently building their Tesla semi production facility in Nevada. And by mid 2025, that will be completed and they will start production of the Tesla semi. So that'll be pushed out there. You'll start to see a lot more of these companies buy these Tesla semis. They'll be on the road. And soon we will see full fleets really using electric vehicles. Anyway, look, I thought this was something that interested me. Hopefully it interested you. Electrification is something that I think we're all passionate about, and fleets are probably even more important than consumer vehicles. Fleets do way more, more, way more miles than us average city drivers, people driving to work and to school and to our events. These companies are having consistent routine cycles, driving 200 miles every single day, and this repetition is perfect for the implementation of electric vehicles. So I'm excited to see what else is gonna happen in the future. If there any wasn't anything I covered about electric vehicles and fleets um, here, comment down below. I'd love to you know, see more stuff. And in fact, before you go, right, I'll have this up screen. So we have electric school buses from Lion Electric. And so Lion Electric is a city bus manufacturer and even BYD. The Chinese company BYD makes city buses for some cities in California that are electric and even Europe. But Line Electric makes school buses, and they have hundreds of school buses across the United States that are electric. School buses aren't really traveling more than 100 miles every single day. In fact, most school buses are traveling one specific route because there's like multiple school buses for one school for multiple different routes. And so school buses are often going one direction and then going to park in a parking lot. And so this really simple route of picking up children, dropping them off, sitting in a depot, that's a place where they can charge, start up the next day, and it works out super well. And so again, fleets and electrification, I think are one in one. There's a lot of incentive for these companies to buy electric vehicles in through fleets because electric vehicles are easier to maintain. These are vehicles, they're assets for the company. They're easy tax write-offs. I think we're gonna see a lot more in 2025. I've reiterated that a million times. Look. Thank you guys so much for watching. If there are any other topics you want us to cover here on the Out of Spec podcast channel, please put them in the comments below. I'm super curious and I'm always looking for more videos to make and have fun with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah, and I'll see you guys in the next one.